Springfield, 1880. In 1880, the Springfield Armory of Springfield, Massachusetts, sent roughly 1,000 new Model 1880 Trapdoor 45 70 caliber rifles to Army troops stationed on the American frontier for testing in the field. The factory and the U.S. Army hoped the new rifles would be an improvement over Springfield's Model 1873 rifle. This is the story of 250 of those Springfield 1880s. Begging your pardon, sir, but... uh, I see it, Sergeant. Figured you would, sir. Almost didn't even ride up to tell you. Glad you did, Sergeant. I don't see everything. Like that, sir? Holden followed the gray-haired sergeant's crooked finger, which pointed southeast toward the pass they found themselves bound to pass in a few minutes. The lieutenant, however, saw only Arizona rocks, Arizona sky, and felt the Arizona heat. He was soaked with sweat beneath his dark tunic, but it wasn't just the heat that caused him to sweat. What was it, Sergeant? Looked like the sun reflecting off something. Rifle, knife... Pretty brass concha. (laughs) Maybe gold. Wouldn't that be something? Pulling the reins up on his bay gelding, Holden raised his right hand and heard the command called out from the first wagon behind him down to the fourth. The canyon drew nearer. Foster studied the north wall. Holden looked at the south side. Sergeant Lusk had dropped back about 20 yards behind the last wagon. When they dipped into the canyon, the air immediately turned cooler. Let me ask you something, Mr. Holden. Why do you do it? Do what, sir? Soldier in this man's army. I know what a first lieutenant makes. I don't. (laughs) Holden lowered his shoulders to show off the straps. I'm a second lieutenant. Well, let me assure you, Grant, that you won't get rich on a captain's salary either. (laughs) I don't do this for the money. For the glory, then. (laughs) The Custer got glory. He also got butchered, got his command killed. I don't see a whole lot of glory coming to anybody in this godforsaken hellhole. How about for pride? The captain turned, stared, grinned, and tugged on his goatee. Pride? Now there's something a man can hang his hat on. Colonel, I think you'd better get word to the commander of the Rurales down in Mexico and the Mexican government. Smythe entered the home, pulled the door shut as best he could, and leaned against the rifle case next to the door. There there must be another way. We must... I would rather we got those weapons back. How the hell are you going to do that, Colonel? Those rifles are already across the border in Mexico. And I gotta think that an old engine butcher like Crooked Nose ain't robbing stagecoaches in Bisbee and copper mines across the border for the fun of it. He's getting money. Money to pay. And he ain't paying off Jed Foster's saloon debts. I cannot. I will not believe that a Medal of Honor winner like Jed Foster would sell four wagon loads of Springfield rifles to Apaches. No, you're probably right. Florence gave him a questioning look. Smythe looked more hopeful. Four wagons. Crooked Nose would have to rob a lot of stagecoaches and mines to get enough money to pay for those. An auction. Sell them to the highest bidder. That can't be! How much do you want, Masterson? Masterson froze. Ah, you can't pay me enough, Lieutenant. Besides, what would prevent you from just murdering me once you found your boy and cleared your honor? What would prevent you from murdering me in my sleep 15 minutes outside this post? Masterson grinned. Make me a proposition, Lieutenant. That's when Grad Holden realized exactly what he had over Sergeant, now Trooper, Ben Masterson. Here's what I can offer you, Ben. I can give you a chance at getting the man who shot Sergeant Byron Lusk dead out of his saddle. Two men could not take those rifles away from the gringo called Foster. I believe you're right. But two men might be able to destroy those weapons. Keep them out of the hands of Amante Negro, the Apaches, and even the bandit in gray, the one who left after the troubles between the Norte Americanos. What you ask is for me to lead two gringos to their deaths. The Canyon of the Soros shall live up to its name. Understand this, Soledad. 
All you're to do is get them to the canyon. Then you get the hell away from there. What happens will be none of your concern. Why do you not go with these gringos? I owe Foster. That much? The old man did not answer. If I do this, if I take those full gringos to El Cañón de los Dolores, and if they manage to destroy the weapons Foster has brought to my country, this will hurt the gringo pig? Sam Florence cocked his head and those keen eyes locked on Soledad. She turned her head to make sure the scout could not see the features on that side of her face. Oh, it'll hurt him. Badly. She swung out of the saddle. I will speak to the two gringos. She pointed at the scout. But I will speak to them alone. <laughs> 